chance here. Oh, lovely work. Ben Saad Abubakar. Cameroon are on their way to win in the competition. Well, then they can't believe it. There is your African champions for 2017. Takes it, Villa scores! To it, Olunga goes for a shot, it's in the net! What a goal! Now Tao! Oh, what a magnificent strike from Percy Tao! Hey guys, good evening and welcome. It is just about here, African Cup of Nations time. Good evening and welcome to our AFCON countdown show. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing, counting down to kick off. Well, I am surrounded by great talent and it's great for me to be working with them. I'm going to start with Stanton on my right hand side. Stanton, countdown's here and we're looking at the clock. 47 hours, 58 minutes. So it's basically here and you can't wait. So excited, Neil. Um, just under two days, um, much anticipated. So much changes to this African Nations Cup, but uh, uh, a surprise welcome here, my ex-teammate. Uh, very briefly, though, um, yeah. but uh, let's forget about local. Let's turn our focus to the continent, yes. Absolutely. Really excited to have you here, Stanton. Of course, Teko Medise is with me. Great pleasure to be working with you, Teko. New it. format, of course, because we've got 24 teams expanded. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we aren't in January. We're now having a, a mid-year Af AFCON, and I think most people have appreciated that. Yeah, I, mean, I think most people have appreciated it. I mean, everybody wants to see more football. I mean, we've been crying about more football and makes uh, African countries as well to have an opportunity, probably maybe to win it as well. So with more teams, with no, um, enough space, enough time, I think it's, it's appreciated. And we've got all the European footballers who, of course, in January frequently having to have time off, oh not so keen to be yeah. here, some of them. But, of course, that's not going to happen this time around. It's set up for a perfect AFCON. What are we doing tonight, folks? It's Countdown Show 1. So we're looking at A, B and C groups. So let's whet your appetite and have a look at the breakdown of those three groups. Well, it's all finally here. And it comes in mega size as well. 24 teams over the next three and a half weeks in Egypt, each looking to find a way to the promised land of African champions. The 2019 Africa Cup of Nations is upon us, and for the hosts, it comes with great expectation. This is the fifth time they'll be hosting Africa's football spectacle. And get this, in three previous editions, they've hosted and won the competition. Will this be number four? Mohamed Salah would answer yes. The Emperor of Egypt is carrying the hopes of a nation. It cannot be him alone though. A squad made up of largely home-based players have to use the home factor to their advantage and guide an expected nation to glory once again. It's up to the likes of Zimbabwe, DR Congo and Uganda to try to stop them in Group A. Zimbabwe are back for a second successive showing at the Africa Cup of Nations. 2017 wasn't great for the Warriors. The squad is much more talented and indeed capable. Game 1 will tell us a lot about their ambitions as they face up to the hosts. Two-time winners DR Congo meanwhile haven't won the competition since 74. Since then, there's been two third-place finishes, including one in 2015. Without some of their stellar names of the past 10 years, they still come to AFCON as dark horses. If they can get their talented frontline cracking, watch out Group A. By winning Group L in the qualifiers, Uganda ensured that they will be in Egypt with a lot of confidence as they return for a seventh time. Their return to the competition in 2017 resulted in a group stage exit without any victories. With Dennis Onyango leading the front line, they enter the competition fearless more than anything else. The Super Eagles have landed back where they feel they belong. Three-time champions that have missed the last two editions, they only have one goal in mind, get back to the summit of African football, and they'll start their campaign in Group B. Burundi will be their first opponents, a time that will be of quite some significance as two of the finest goal scorers during the qualifiers will go head-to-head. Odion Igalo scored a competition-high seven goals, Fiston Abdul Razak of Burundi six. With a stellar cast, the Super Eagles will want to at the very least meet expectation in this group against the debutants. 
Burundi are alongside Madagascar in making their first appearance. Expect both those sides to hunt three points from each other when they do meet. Completing the group is Guinea, but they come with an injury cloud over their head. Will Nabi Keita be fit or not? He is, though, in the squad. If the tag of favourites belongs to any team at this stage, it's Senegal. They have the players, they have the top billing as the top-ranked nation on the continent, and they have a skipper who has been one of the standout players in world football over the last two seasons. Sadio Mane's mercurial ability, along with the support of Khalidou Koulibaly, Salif Sane, Idris Gay, Cheku Kuyate, Maya Nyang, Keita Balde and Ismail Assar will make Senegal the team to beat, even if they will come up against sides with considerable talent as well in Group C. Algeria fall under that title. For so long, the brides made by never the bride. The Desert Foxes will look to this time around to use their Dark Horses tag to good use, having failed to turn favourites into titles in the last two editions. Riyad Mahrez, Sofiane Feguli, Yassine Brahimi and Islam Slimani are older and wiser. Algeria need them to come to the party. Not since 2004 have Kenya been at AFCON, thus their celebrations were felt throughout the continent when on the 30th of November last year, they confirmed their return. Victor Wanyama will captain a side that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ghana in the qualifiers and didn't fall too short. They will look to trouble Algeria in their opener. Meanwhile, it's been a great couple of years for Tanzanian football, 2019 in particular, with Simba going all the way to the quarterfinals of the CAF Champions League. Four of the club's players are in the squad that will be playing AFCON football for the first time since 1980. Generations have come and grown old since. How much more can we expect from the Taifa stars in a year in which they've been given license to dream? Group C has all the answers. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as A, B, C. That's what we're going to be looking at tonight. Great to have you along. And obviously, we're going to be focusing in on Egypt. They are hosting the tournament for a record fifth time. So congratulations to them. And we expect them to do a great job. And of course, probably go deep into the tournament. That's what I want to talk to Teco about. Huge advantage being home, of course, but the pressure's piled on because of Salah. And I see this morning's report, Egypt coach plays down Salah's influence. He says, we're not a one-man team, but uh, many people feel that they are. I mean, we all know that Salah is the big man for, for Egypt, and uh, he's the one, actually, they'll be looking forward to, for him to bring the trophy home. But yet again, if you check the, the, all the scandals that are surrounding Egypt, mm. you know, there's, there's ticket prices, you know, there's the politics as well. And also the main man, Salah, as well, that the people are asking about his future. Would he be in the right frame of mind to control and help the team to proceed? And as we all know from, from the World Cup that they played, they didn't do well. Mm. So now they play home, so probably now they want to do well. Yeah, and it's important, obviously. We've seen time and time again that it's good for the host nation to do well. Um, in the World Cup, we yeah. saw Russia doing exceptionally well. And yeah. it would be great to see Egypt if they don't go all the way, certainly get to a semi-final, uh, Stanton. And they're more than capable of doing that. 100%, um, as the coach said, he's not just a one-man team. And I think uh, the scene is set for Salah mm. because um, he came off the back of a, a Champions League injured going into the World Cup mm. and uh, didn't have the impact he really wanted to make. Mm -hmm. So he has an opportunity this time around won the Champions League, now comes into a major tournament on the continent. And I do think that the stage is set. But like I said, and Teko and I were talking off, uh, off air, uh, the quality of El Neni, the youngster at Arsenal, mm. uh, the quality of El Mohamedi, um, his team has just uh, joined the, the, the top flight of the EPL in uh, Aston Villa. So uh, I think Egypt really, a host nation, uh, um, a solid squad at their, at their disposal. And I think we can expect them to go very, very far, if not win it. Yeah, Stanton wanted to come up with one of those Egyptian puns. He said the coach is in denial if he thinks they're a one-man <laughs> team. So that's a fair point. Yeah, it's good and important. And they've got to put those politics and the stories. It's incredible, though, in football. The yeah. politics is never that far away. And you get these stories before. We had the same thing in Russia. We had the same thing at the last AFCON. When the football gets underway, and here is Group A, yeah. you know, all of those go out the window. The players just want to get there and play the football. Of course, as a player, the only, only thing that you want to do, you want to be on the pitch and play the game. Mm. But yet again, you, you look at the game that they're playing against Zimbabwe, it's the first game, that's the most important game. Actually, that's the game that will actually set the tone. If ever the politics were questioned, that would be the game that actually will put everything in silence so that people can focus on the game. As you know, the game of football, you know, we've seen game of football combining people, you know, making peace in certain countries. So hopefully this game against Zimbabwe, 
if Egypt does well, that would, that would be the case. Yeah. That first game is important, obviously, for Zimbabwe. Uh, they are near neighbours. We wish them well. But Biliat is so keen. We saw him actually in the opening. Um, he's, they're going to rely on him a lot, aren't they, Stanton? Yeah, I think uh, Biliat's uh, got a lot uh, on his shoulders. But I think knowledge Musona. Yeah. Mm. I think he's the one that's going to bear most of it because he has the experience. Uh, and I think Teko agrees with me because yeah. coming into the qualifiers, I think he scored about five goals. Yeah. And uh, I think the, the quality goal, has yeah. uh, Teko, I think we've witnessed it. Yeah, yeah. And here, we, let's go back and have a look at this Egyptian squad, just take you through the depth of it. They're well organised, they're well disciplined, they've been there, they've done it. The very fact that they're hosting the tournament for a record fifth time, um, they are seasoned and they represent, of course, the North African style of football. That's one of the beauties, I always feel, Teko, about the yeah. African Cup of Nations, yeah. is we get within the African continent different style of players, yeah. different yeah. physiques, yeah. different abilities. Yeah. Egypt know what their strengths are, though. And, and also, like, um, especially those um, Egyptians, your Tunisian, your Algerians, mm. those are the teams that knows how to win. You know, they know how to get points. And by keeping the ball as well, yes. you know, they're very good in keeping the ball they're very well as well. They know how to dive inside the box. They know how to get free kicks. They know how to get set pieces, and they'll punish you with that. Yes. So now it's going to be very, very tricky against Zimbabwe, but knowing for a fact that Egypt can keep the ball, Zimbabwe is very quick in front, so it'll be very surprising. Yeah, they're very knowledgeable. Yeah. They're wily old characters, aren't they, Stanton? Yeah, for sure. And uh, the quality of that man, Billiard, which we... Um, I tried to take the pressure off him by putting... You put his back on again. <laughs> but his quality is uh, yeah. second to none. You know, um, I think his runs, his first touch... Um, uh, we mentioned how disciplined the Northern African teams are yeah. and how uh, compact they can be and defend well. Uh, but it's going to need the creativity of a Billiard that will unlock that defence. And given the opportunity, trust me, he, he has the ability to unlock that. And also, and also, Stanton, I think the maturity for of Musona, like he's the guy that can draw all the defenders to come to him and create goals. He doesn't just score goals, he creates goals. So I think also, like you said, I think it's, it's a chance for Kama to shine. Yeah. They're the lowest ranked side in this group, um, Zimbabwe. So it's their first match when they take on Egypt. I would imagine, being the first match I mean, against the host nation, mm. if they walked away with a draw here, they'd be best pleased. So it's a balance because they, they obviously would like to win the game, but yeah. you know it's not the end of the world if they can escape from that Egyptian result with a point. And just wonder how they go about that. Of course, Egypt, the pressure of being the host nation yeah. and the fact that it's Zimbabwe, expected to win. So an interesting match. Yeah, it is. I mean, the question would be, is Zimbabwe going to play with the 4-3-3 that they normally play with the three up front? Mm. Or they'll, they'll consolidate and look at how Egyptians are playing because we need to understand as well that Salah will be playing and is the most dangerous player. Yeah. So you want to consolidate the points, but yet again, Zimbabwe is not expected to win that game. So I think maybe it'll be that one of those games that where they'll be freely and express themselves and hopefully they'll get a point. I had to look twice. I thought it was a Nazu all over again here. There's PSL players left, right and centre yeah. here. Yes, um, so we're very familiar with all the players mm. and uh, that's why I think the sentiment for us uh, on the southern part of the continent will be for Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think, uh, and Teko's going to agree with me here, because there's no, there's no pressure on Zimbabwe. Yeah. Um, they're coming up, it's the first, it's opening, Africa's watching, the world is watching. No pressure on them. Uh, Egypt is expected to win. Mm. They're the country that's hosting, they're the mm. country with the political uh, instability. So I think Zimbabwe just needs to go there and do what they know best and uh, use their flair, their southern flair. I'm going to say it, it's a southern thing uh, to unlock that uh, um, tight and feisty Egyptian defence. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly talk about Uganda and uh, coming to you, Teko, because uh, Dennis Oyongo, of course, is based here in South Africa. He's going to be important experience-wise, leading the team, talking to the team. It's a tricky group, but I would imagine that they'll look at the group and think it's not impossible for them to, to get out of, out of Group A. I don't think it's... They, they, they've got confidence now because, I mean, they've got the best uh, goalkeeper. Mm. You know, who's, who's leading from the back and he's he he saved them so many times. He's, he's, he's doing this even locally here at, at, at Sundowns. But yet again, they've got uh, capable strikers as well. You know, they've got an experienced team. And uh, they, they're a team that works very, very hard and um, they're going to do what they normally do. They're just going to work hard and then hopefully... And Dennis also will help them set pieces because of his structure. He's very tall. I mean, he's a tall black wall. So, so with him, you know, you always, as a player, that you feel confident when you have somebody like him that can save you and put you in the game. And I know that Uganda will want to do that often. Yeah, well, they say, of course, many goals win games, but also clean sheets of get course. you through points in mm -hmm. tournaments and they get you out of group stages, Stanton. No, 100%. And uh, not forgetting that there is, I think, the best uh, four teams that's best third place yes. that will go through to yes, the so next round. Yeah, yeah. So I think Uganda will be looking at this group and saying, listen, uh, we could possibly sneak in there. If we manage to get one win and a draw, 
uh, we could possibly go to the next round. So I think uh, that's what they, they'll be aiming for. Let's quick comment about uh, the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo. Some good players. One player, Yannick Balassi, who jumps off. Big, strong player. He's got European experience. Yeah. Um, so he could be really influential because in tight groups like this, you just need a little bit of magic in one game, a little bit of strength, and uh, that can be all the difference. But I mean, uh, as we know, all the teams, all Congo teams have always been solid mm. from the back to front and they always have one of those strikers that is very versatile, whether to hold up play or maybe to play behind uh, uh, the defence. So, you know, we don't ex gonna expect my, uh, anything different from this mm. Congo team. You know, they, they'll rely on the big men to do the job, but yet again, they'll be tall and they'll be looking for those set pieces to, to win the games. Very quickly, Egypt, I think we all think will come out of the group. Give me the other name. Egypt and? Congo. Congo. Egypt and Congo. I love it. I love it when my panel agree. They say <laughs> Congo and Egypt. We'll stay with you because Groups B and C after the break. Welcome back, Group B. Well, I bumped into a couple of Nigerian friends of mine today. They said they'll be watching tonight. If we don't tip Nigeria to get out of the group, there will be trouble. So uh, no pressure on Stanton and Tergo, but let's have mm -hmm. a look at it. Um, this is the group which really, I have to say from a Nigerian perspective, Tergo, is a soft group. Of course. Um, they will, nothing really there is going to put the fear of God into them. I mean, of course, when they saw the group, I'm sure they celebrated before. Mm -hmm. You know, I think as a coach, uh, it gives the coach much comfort because of now the first two games, you can make sure that you win the game. In the third game, you can actually play other guys and give um, others a rest. And yes, the most important thing as well is to be number one in the group so you can avoid the other number one on the other side. So I think it's important for Nigeria not to take this lightly because, you know, the last Afcon there wasn't there and the other one as well. So they know the importance of this and there's high expectations from especially in this group. Yeah, you've summed it up perfectly. The flip side to that, of course, Stanton, is complacency. And I say that because we've come off a, a World Cup where we saw some of the big names fluff their lines. So if I'm the Nigerian coach, I'm saying, remember Argentina, remember Germany? Yeah. We don't want to be fitted in that category. They really should have too much class, too much strength, too much ability for this group. Yes, Neil, I'm going to be bold and say that Nigeria will have no problems uh, seeing themselves top of the group, mm. as Deco mentioned, and uh, coming out tops, avoiding the, uh, the more dangerous countries. Because I think they've, they've fared extremely well in the World Cup. Unfortunate not to get uh, to the second round there, but I think mm. that experience from the World Cup is going to mm. rub off here. And uh, if you just look at their squad, there's so much... Uh, uh, there's a nice mixture of experience and youth in that squad that uh, will certainly give us all the signs to say that they're going to be a big threat in this competition. I think you've again summed it up perfectly because that experience in the World Cup has got to put them in, in huge stead. There were chances there. They really should have gone through in many respects in that tournament. There wasn't great game management. Uh, if they're better at this in this tournament with a soft, in inverted commas, group, not only will they get out of the group, I think they'll make their presence really felt in Egypt. Yeah, yeah, they should. I mean, this is their chance. And um, like um, we, we've been saying that the experience that they have now, and especially with the with the age group that they have, you know, mm. with so many young players as well, you know, they will still be there four years from now. So the coach was very smart by building the team um, four years ago. Well, here's the Nigerian squad list, and uh, it's pretty much a who's who. It's pretty impressive reading, so there is no shortage of quality there, Stanton. Yeah. You know, just uh, names that pop out there is, uh, we've seen Musa, uh, John Obi Michael has made mm. the call up. Mm -hmm. uh, made the squad there, so a wealth Vastly of experience Vastly experienced. Mm -hmm. um, Ingalo, playing his, uh, his football in China now, scored seven goals in the qualifiers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the young, enterprising talent, he will be at Arsenal there as well, mm -hmm. amongst those big names. Mm. There's indeed Leicester City. Again, you know, sometimes you look at the football clubs as much as the players, yeah. and then you know that these guys are playing at the top of their game in Europe, South America, wherever they're playing, but they are playing with quality players and they're playing with well-organized leagues. Um, so that, that experience is vital. I mean, it is. I mean, it's every coach's dream to have such experience, but yet again, the challenge will be for you to, to take all that experience and make it work on the day mm. and win games. And then I think he's got capable players to win games. And um, I think, like I said, he needs to wrap up very early so that they can uh, prepare for, for, for the semi-finals and the quarter-finals. But yet again, the first game is very important. He needs to win that game. Mm. 
um, to bring confidence within the team. But just because you have superstars within the team doesn't actually guarantee you any points. Mm -hmm. What about Burundi? Um, Abdul Razik's an interesting player. We know him well. Teko, you mm -hmm. actually played with him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's been scored. He was quite prolific in qualifying. Yeah, I mean, I think he's, he's, he's grown... Um, a little bit. He has matured as a player because I think his biggest problem when he came to South Africa, I think he, the adaptation, you know, he struggled a little bit to adapt, but you could see the quality that he had. Mm -hmm. But all the time, whenever he goes back to the national team, he always plays well. You can see the confidence that he has and mm -hmm. they play that also according to his strength. And I think also there's an opportunity for any striker to prove his worth. Yeah, six goals, averaging one a match. So uh, the man's been there and done it. And, and good players like this, you want to perform on the on the global stage? Look, we've never seen the best of him, but his quality is certainly there to, mm -hmm. to, to notice. Um, uh, you don't score uh, six or seven goals in qualifiers by luck. That's, yeah. that's one thing for sure. Mm -hmm. So his quality is there. Uh, but a name that, uh, that comes to mind, and I think uh, we mentioned this off a uh, gentleman, it's uh, Papi Fati. Mm -hmm. um, he sadly passed away just after Burundi qualifying for mm -hmm. the first ever um, yeah. Nations Cup. So that's a bit of a sad point and Tragic. possibly a bit of uh, motivation for the team just to do well for, for Papi Fati. That's a good point, and let's hope that they do do that. So again, similar, Nigeria definitely get through. Who's the other name for you, Jacob, in that group? <laughs> I think Nigeria and, um, wow. That's a wow tough, <laughs> tough call who's going to finish second. Guinea. Guinea, yeah. I'd say, I'd, Guinea. I'd say Burundi. Burundi or Guinea, yeah. okay. Interesting. Let's move on to Group C then, shall we? And uh, have a look at this one. So Group C offers you an interesting balance because I don't think it'll be as straightforward. Egypt, Nigeria, red hot favorites in the other two. This is very competitive for me. So you've got Algeria, Kenya, Senegal and Tanzania. Obviously Kenya, I think Victor Wanyama, I would do, being a Spurs man, of course. So I hope he does well. Algeria, Senegal and Tanzania. Nice group, Stanton, but competitive. Very competitive. Um, we look at Algeria. Uh, I think they're gonna feel more at home. Uh, with the competition being played in North Africa. Uh, so they're going to have a slight advantage there. And uh, then Senegal, I think they're going to be the overwhelming favourites in this group mm. because of the big names there. Um, but as we've seen, there's a trend in, in, in modern football is that there's no small teams anymore. Mm. Yep. We've seen it with Iceland, we've seen it in the European Cup. So um, um, as much as we're saying, yes, Senegal is uh, ranked first in, in Africa and Algeria uh, 12th on the continent, that does not give them automatic uh, qualification to the next round. Yeah. Senegal, again, physically strong. We know what you're going to get, but I hear exactly what Stanton's saying, and I think that's what happened in some of the big tournaments that we've seen. If you go in underestimating any side now, yeah. you're going to be in trouble. So you have to do your homework. All of these sides, Tanzania, Kenya, Algeria especially, capable of upsets. Yeah, I mean, they are. I mean, um, yet again, I think it's, it's, it's important for everyone within the group, especially the Algeria um, and... Um, Kenya and, and Senegal, they need, to, they need to do well in the first games because and it, there's so much expectation as well from Senegal, especially with, uh, with, um, with Mane within the team, with so many superstars that are playing mm. in so many different leagues. The experience also that is expected to play a big part, but yet again, we all know that what wins games is goals. So hopefully, whoever that scores more, they'll win the game. Well, I can only think what Mares must have been learning from Pep Guardiola the yeah. last 18 months or so. I mean, that's taken him to a new level, I would imagine, Stanton. No, and he certainly got, uh, went to Man City and mm. uh, didn't look out of depth at all, mm -hmm. contributed to that uh, sterling performance in the league and seen them be champions. Uh, but he's going to be carrying the burden there alongside with uh, Brahimi from Porto and possibly Slimani from Fenerbahce. So um, Algeria has a, a proper squad. Um, uh, representation. Well, we're at the rear end of the show, so we ought to mention Harris Belkabla, who, of course, was taken <laughs> out of the squad. We won't tell exactly why, but you could work out why. So he was axed, the midfielder, wasn't he, for uh, doing something which he shouldn't have done on live streaming. So there's been drama there. Um, yeah. But that, to me, Teko, is a good thing, because it shows the coach has his discipline yeah. and it's in place. It doesn't matter who you are, if you step out of line, yeah. and that says something to the squad. I mean, we've seen such thing happening with the coaches where they, they don't want to disturb uh, the team, so they, they're very strict when it comes to discipline. And, mm. and this is a very good thing to show that, you know, footballers, I think when, when there's big tournaments like this, you need to focus. You know, social media, it's, it's something else. I think when it's time to work, let's work. And then I think the guy has learned a lesson from what he did. Yeah, I think the Algerians, again, interesting, uh, I mentioned about the clash of football. So you've got Algeria, very much a North African team, obviously. And then you've got the physical presence and strength of Kenya with Victor Wanyama and Senegal, certainly. Yeah. Reminder, of course, that uh, uh, Mane will miss that opening game. So here's the Algerian squad. 
well experienced, you know, in African Cup of Nations. They play a good brand of football. They've qualified not only for African Cup of Nations before, but they've qualified for uh, World Cup finals. So don't take them lightly. And the fact that it's in Egypt, which is on their doorstep, yep. they'll be very familiar with the heat and all of the surroundings that they'll play in. Yeah, Algeria play a very attacking um, um, system uh, with Slimani up front. He's, uh, he's a bit of an Olivier Giroud that um, allows players to come in and uh, uh, looks to the likes of Mares and Brahimi just to play off him. So very disciplined at the back, but going forward, they play off a, a reference striker and uh, they're a very exciting team, but um, going to be difficult to see who's going to take it between Senegal and Algeria. Senegal, Algeria, you don't have to say which order as long as you say those two, you reckon they'll get out. Could there be a surprise? Could Kenya surprise there? I doubt. I highly doubt it. I mean, with the team that Senegal has and Algeria has, I, I don't see Kenya uh, surprising anyone because now their star player is the midfielder, you know, it's not somebody that scores goals. I think when it comes to this type of tournament, you need to be rely relying on someone that will be able to score goals for you. Mm -hmm. And I don't see Kenya doing that. Okay, guys, I want to quickly remind you that this has been probably the quickest show ever. If you blinked, you might have missed it, but it's been fantastic having you here. Tomorrow, of course, we're going to be doing the other groups. Just a reminder about Hello Africa, which is on the weekend, master plan as well. If you're looking for your coverage of African Cup of Nations, all the games live here. We have a sensational panel lined up and we have all of that expertise and fun and games on the weekend. So lots to look forward to. I'm looking up to remind me of what the countdown is because it is now down to less than 48 hours. We're into 47 hours before that kickoff. The opening ceremony is going to be fantastic. My thanks to Santa, my thanks to Teko Medisa, my thanks to you for watching. That's it from a wrap with our first African Cup of Nations countdown show. We're back with the same time tomorrow night for groups C, D, E, and F.